She used to be a bookseller. Yes, for seven years I worked at Tales on Moon Lane, which is a beautiful children's independent in South London. Basically, what happens to me in the office quite a lot is that someone will mention an author or a title and I'll just go... Uh? <laughs> <laughs> I was raised in the Netherlands and read mostly Dutch children's literature and I missed out on quite a lot. And Liz knows all about these books, so today we're going to run through some of the kind of children's literature that's still appropriate for YA readers that she thinks that I should read. British people, don't hate me if you think these are really obvious or that they're not classic enough or something like that because I wanted to give books that I adore, I think are really good examples of British children's books and YA books that Sana and her viewers would be interested in reading. So here we go. Dun, 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 dun. She hasn't seen any of these books. No, I don't yet. know what so, this is. A Little Love Song by Michelle McGorian. See, this is one I've never heard of before. Okay. Have you ever heard of Goodnight Mr. Tom? No. <gasps> Goodnight Mr. Tom is a book that probably every British kid has read at primary school or the beginning of secondary school. Okay. And it was made into a really heartbreakingly brilliant ITV drama with John Thor. Michelle McGorian, who wrote Goodnight Mr. Tom, it's her mm -hmm. most famous one. This is another that she wrote. It's called A Little Love Song. Me and my twin sister probably read it when we were about 12 or 13. In fact, in this edition, there's my sister's really bad Aww. handwriting. It follows two sisters, Rose and Diana. Diana is the beautiful, confident older sister. Rose, who is the main character in the story, is sort of in her shadow and quite happy there, but beginnings get a bit uncomfortable. I think it's 1943, and they're sent away to a tiny coastal village to be out of harm's way whilst their parents are doing very important things for the war work. So they live in this cottage in this tiny, tiny village, and it's basically one summer where they really find out who they are. I'm one of three sisters, so I love any books about sisters. You will notice this, actually, in all of these books. And it's just really beautifully written, very British feeling. I kept seeing this from the corner of my yeah. eye thinking it was cheese. It's oranges. They pay, <laughs> yeah, oranges bizarre play a part. The other thing I should say, there's a kind of Rose discovers a sort of sub storyline that echoes back to the past and stuff. Fly by Night by Frances Harding. It's about a girl called Mosca in a world where reading is banned and people are terrified of the printing press. It's got a homicidal goose, a man called Eponymous Clent who is a wordsmith by nature and floating coffee house barges. Frances Harding's writing is unbelievably brilliant. She creates metaphors that you have, will never have entered your brain before and yet somehow they're the most perfect things you've ever thought of. It's quite calanchity and sort of rhythmic and brilliant and Mosca is full of gumption and a really sharp tongue and it's so entertaining but purely for just some absolutely fantastic unique writing. If you like Neil Gaiman you will like Francis Harding. A lot of you are going to be like oh, how obvious with this one but she's never read it. I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. That's a really nice edition. This That's really is, cute. Thank you. This was the vintage classics edition before they did the one with the girl with the blue mm. but holding the bluebells and now you've got the vintage children's classic which is the blue with the silhouette castle. So this was given to me by my godmother when I was 15. I'd already read an edition of it when I was 11, hadn't really enjoyed it that much and then at 15 found this book and found, I think, the meaning of life. So it follows the Mortman family who live in a ramshackle castle, it's narrated by Cassandra and it's her diary and then there's her beautiful frustrated big sister Rose. They have no money, they live in the middle of nowhere, nothing's going on. Their mad ex-artist model stepmother Topaz who goes out communing with nature wearing nothing but a pair of wellies and their ex-famous writer father who basically wrote this seminal novel kind of two decades before or something like that or a decade before and now is all dried up due to writer's block and has become a grumpy hermit. I cannot say enough good things about this book. Everyone I know who's read this book, which is a lot of people, everyone has a different favourite moment. Everyone has that different bit that has just totally connected with them. I think it is actually the perfect novel. Great love story as well. It's full of references to other books. One of the things is that they sort of have learned how to be women from Jane Austen as opposed to the sort of 1930s, 1940s films that they grew up with so Rose when the two heirs come into it it's sort of all batting her eyelashes and sort of ah. and Cassandra is mortified for her and it's it's all very very funny. There's a Joanna Trollope quote on the back of this that says I know a few novels except Pride and Prejudice that inspire as much fierce lifelong affection in their readers and it's so true. I feel like if there's one book you would make me read it'd be that one. That one yeah. totally. And here's the last one now this technically isn't a YA book this is one that me and my sisters read when we were about 14. So the Mitford sisters were six sisters. Wait, you told me about I've this. I've told you about point. this. Yes. And if you don't know, there were six sisters who, Nancy the eldest was born in 1904, I think Deborah was born in like 1924 or something, and they kind of basically met everyone and did everything that you could have done in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. They met everyone from Hitler to JFK, and I've just been fascinated with them since I was about 13 because they were women who just did whatever the hell they liked and really defined some eras. And just, they are just fascinating. Mary S. Lovell wrote a great biography about them, just so you know. Anyway, this is actually an anthology of 
some of Nancy's books. Nancy was the eldest and she okay. was the most famous writer. The first two, her most famous two, are The Pursuit of Love and Love in a Cold Climate. Again, set during the 2030s, there's, a, there's another theme. It tells the story of a girl called Fanny and her cousins who are just mad. There's hundreds of them and they were all very much based on Nancy and her family. It's about Fanny and her favourite cousin Linda finding love. It incorporates the Spanish Civil War and coming out balls at Buckingham Palace and oh Nancy is most famous for her really, really biting, witty tongue. I mean, it could cut you, but they're really enjoyable. The characters are larger than life and what's amazing about it is that so many of them are actually, you know, based on real people. They're adult books, but they're the perfect kind of introduction to adult books for anyone and if you are an adult watching this and you haven't read them, you fools. Those are a couple of books to add to my to read pile. Seriously, you have to read them. And you'll make me read them. So yeah, that's I will. Fine. Okay, so in the comments, you can let me know which one of these books you've read and like which ones you would add to the list. Yes, totally. What have I missed out? Thank you so much for being in the video with me and educating me. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's been super fun. If you want to chat with Livs, you can do so on Twitter. Absolutely. And I'll put her Twitter in the description yeah. as well. Goodbye. Doi!